wants to kill me. Season 2, Episode 3. Darkness fell upon the city due to a powerful thunderstorm that left the town without power. The only light source was the lightning that flickered upon the two demonic creatures, also known as Crazy Mary Slaughter and Detective Jackson as they lay cuddling in the most disgusting embrace. Thank you, Detective Jackson, for helping me get rid of all evidence against me and for helping me make it look as if David is the guilty one. I love you, said Mary, trying to show emotion but it was impossible due to her dark and twisted heart that made it sound cold and empty. I can't wait for the day when David is convicted of murder. It's almost orgasmic just thinking of them stabbing that needle deep into his disgusting little veins and watching him suffer while he dies from lethal injection, said Mary, her blood-colored lips displaying the most creepiest and nauseating smile. You're right, and I hear it's the worst way to die. Poison entering your veins while your organs shut down, said Detective Jackson, his lips mimicking Mary's. Please do share the delicious details, Detective, said Mary sadistically. Some other time, said Detective Jackson, raking his long fingers through Mary's hair. Well, I do have some sort of clue on what it's like. I did poison David's stupid little dog, Geo. Wait, you killed the man's dog? That's not cool, he said. Oh, shut up. Stop being so sensitive. Plus, you're being quite hypocritical, seeing that you shot your own partner in the back of the head, blowing his brains out all over the place. Must have been quite a mess to clean up. Quite sinister of you, but I love it and I find it very attractive. And I did it all for you, baby said Detective Jackson as their eyes locked onto one another's, refusing to let go. Hopefully Donovan and his brother gets to Misty and Chandler in time before they get that evidence to David. Then we can rest assured that there's no way anyone will ever discover the truth that I am the killer of that idiot cashier, his moron girlfriend Samantha, his stupid little dog Geo, and soon his pathetic bimbo of a girlfriend Misty. When this is over, we can finally be together right, said Detective Jackson, his hand caressing the shoulder of Mary. Yes, but my sister Diamond has to come with us. We were separated for far too long until recently when we reunited. And it's all David's fault that separated us to begin with. When me and my sister were out to dinner earlier, we made a pact that we would never let a man come between us ever again. And I will keep my promise to her. 
she is the only true family that I have left, except for never mind. David not only ruined my life by breaking up with me, he ruined it also by coming between me and Diamond. And I have another big juicy secret that he will find out about just before he dies. It will surely bring him trembling to his knees. You keep talking about this big secret. What is it? Asked the detective. I can't tell you. At least not yet. Then Mary's eyes shifted toward the window's ledge where a very familiar looking black creature sat, its yellow eyes glowing and fixed upon them. Hmm, what do you think I should do with Misty's cat? Shall I keep it or have it join David's dog Geo in the pet cemetery? Hmm, decisions, decisions. Or oh, what should a girl do? Look, you're not the only one that hates that bastard. I have my reasons as well, said Detective Jackson. Oh, you mean your big secret that you've been keeping, said Mary. Tell me your secret and I'll tell you mine. You can tell me anything, honey, said Mary caressing his chest and toying with his emotions like a cat with a mouse. The detective closed his eyes, took a deep breath, and said, His father killed my father. No, whispered Mary. What happened? Well, when I was a child, my father had robbed a bank not out of greed for money, but because we were poor and my mother was dying because she needed a kidney transplant. We needed the money to pay for it. So on the night of the robbery, his father was in pursuit after my father in a car chase. He had gained speed on my father, and that's when it happened. He aimed his gun at his back window and pulled the trigger as the bullet went through the back of the windshield, entering the back of my father's head, ending his life immediately. When my mother found out, she couldn't take the pain of losing my father. So on that same night, she ended her life. I was the one who found her hanging, cold and lifeless. Even to this day, I can never, ever get that image out of my mind. I was only 10 years old at the time, so I had to grow up fatherless and motherless and ended up spending many years in an orphanage. Seeing him die is the sweetest revenge for my mother and my father. Yes, I know he's not responsible himself for their deaths, but since he is from that bastard, it's almost the same as killing the man who killed my father and my mother. Don't worry, honey. We will all get our revenge on him. You, me, and my sister Diamond. David's days are numbered. Then she got a text on her phone from Donovan. Speaking of revenge, what is it? Said Detective Jackson as Mary showed him the text that had a photo attached to it. They did it. Misty and Chandler. Oh, just wait till David sees this. We might not need wait for Lethal and 
injection after all, because he will probably die of a heart attack, said Mary happily. Meanwhile, at the office of Chandler Sharp. Chandler, are they gone? said Misty, as they lay there on the floor covered in fake blood. Yes, replied Chandler. I told you these bulletproof vests would come in handy, didn't I? And thank God for those fake blood packs that made it look like real blood, said Misty, as they rose to their feet. Well, I can't take credit for the blood. All credit goes to my brother, since he is a movie makeup artist in Hollywood. We need to get the hell out of here right now, though, said Chandler. You're right. There's no time to waste. We need to get this evidence in the right hands in order to free David before it's too late. Let's go, said Misty. Oh shit, I forgot the evidence. We have to go back for the laptop, said Donovan, as he turned the car around and headed back to Chandler's office. Meanwhile, at the police station, there I sat in complete darkness, eagerly waiting for some glimpse of hope. I was not only missing my Uncle James, longing for his love, support, and guidance, but I was also missing Misty as well. And not your average missing. I was starting to have feelings for her. She had helped me so much had been the perfect ride or die woman in my life and I was starting to realize that. Then, all of a sudden, an unfamiliar face appeared out of the darkness. Who are you? I asked. The name is Winthorpe Adams III. I am your attorney. of Chandler Sharp. Hey, come back here, yelled Donathan as Misty and Chandler escaped out of the back door and into the Misty Mobile as they sped down the road and away from their assassins. Miss Slaughter, I have some bad news. They're not dead after all. It was a trick. We're after them right now. You fucking idiots. You better catch them and kill them or you're not getting paid. Bring them back to me in pieces. To be continued.